Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson on the fundamentals of ultrasound physics. This lesson will focus on the basics of sound waves, which are what create the images in sonography. We will discuss the unique properties of sound waves, how they differ from electromagnetic waves, and how they work to deliver ultrasound images. Let's begin with a quick look at waves. You can think of waves as vehicles that carry many kinds of energy from one place to another. For instance, in radiography, the potential energy in an electric current is transferred to create electromagnetic waves called X-rays, which travel from the X-ray tube to an image receptor to create an image. Most waves share the specific properties of wavelength and frequency, which influence the amount of energy they transfer and at what speed. The wavelength is the distance from one crest to another, or from one trough to another, of a wave. A wave's frequency is the number of wavelengths that pass a point in a certain time, and is measured in hertz. Knowing the frequency and wavelength allows us to determine the speed of sound with the equation speed equals frequency times wavelength. Next, we need to define sound. Sound is a mechanical energy that travels through a medium like air, water, or tissue. Sound does not exist on its own and cannot travel through a vacuum. For example, when we speak, the vibrations of our vocal cords create the sounds of our voice, which can be heard because it travels through particles of air. So how does sound travel through the air? The sound energy compresses together the particles in the air, and as the energy passes through, the particles return to their original position, spreading back out. This return to the original position where the particles are more spread out is called rarefaction. We call the back-and-forth motion of these cycles of compression and rarefaction oscillations. Imagine you're in a crowd, and someone pushes you into the person next to you. You bump into the person next to you, and this pushes them into the person next to them, and so on, like a chain reaction. That's how particles in a medium transfer the mechanical energy of sound, creating a sound wave. Moments when particles are separated is called rarefaction, and moments when they are pushed together is called compression. Areas of compression result in high pressure and density, while areas of rarefaction result in low pressure and density. The difference in density determines how much of a sound wave reflects back as well as the strength of the echoes. We'll discuss these concepts more in a different lesson. This is why sound waves cannot travel in a vacuum. Without a medium to travel through, there are no particles to push into one another, so sound waves are not able to propagate. Or, to put it another way, they have no particles to transfer their energy between to move away from their source. There's a reason the phrase, in space, no one can hear you scream, works on multiple levels. The scientific level is that space is a vacuum, so if you screamed, the sound would not travel. Next, let's look at how sound waves differ from electromagnetic waves. First, it is important to note that sound waves are longitudinal waves. This means their particles vibrate in the same direction as the wave travels. However, electromagnetic waves, like light and x-rays, are transverse waves. This means that the particles in these electromagnetic waves travel perpendicular to the direction the wave is traveling. Think about a surfer getting ready to ride the waves. The surfer represents particles, and the waves indicate the wave's direction. In transverse waves, the surfer is transitioning out to sea and moving up and down against the waves coming into shore. In longitudinal waves, the surfer hopes to ride the wave for a long time, so they surf parallel to the wave. Since electromagnetic waves are transverse waves, they do not need a medium to travel through. Electromagnetic waves use electromagnetic energy produced by electric and magnetic fields to self-propagate. Therefore, they don't need any medium, and they can travel in a vacuum through space. Sound waves, however, use mechanical energy, and must have a medium through which to travel because they rely on the transference of energy between particles. These differences in how the waves propagate and travel is key to how ultrasound imaging works. Since electromagnetic waves are self-propagating and don't require a medium through which to move, the speed of electromagnetic waves is constant. Their velocity never changes. They always move at the same speed. However, sound does require a medium, and it travels at different speeds through various materials and tissues. The speed of sound waves changes depending on the medium's density and elasticity, which we will discuss in more detail in another lesson. 
When you're performing an ultrasound, you're essentially sending sound waves into the body and interpreting how they reflect and travel. The differences in wave speed and interaction with various tissues allow us to differentiate different tissues in the body and to create diagnostic images. Let's check your understanding of sound waves. What differentiates sound waves from electromagnetic waves? A. Sound waves propagate without a medium, unlike electromagnetic waves. B. Electromagnetic waves involve particle oscillation parallel to wave direction, while sound waves involve perpendicular oscillation. C. Sound waves require a medium and involve particle displacement in the direction of wave propagation. D. Electromagnetic waves are longitudinal waves used in ultrasound imaging. Take a second to figure it out on your own. The correct answer is C. Sound waves require a medium and involve longitudinal particle motion. Electromagnetic waves do not need a medium and involve transverse oscillations, making A, B, and D incorrect. In summary, energy often travels through waves, and waves can be described by their wavelength and frequency. Sound waves are mechanical energy that travel through a medium by pushing particles in cycles of compression and rarefaction, creating longitudinal waves. Unlike electromagnetic waves, which can travel in a vacuum, sound waves require a medium like air, water, or tissue. These properties are critical for ultrasound imaging, as sound wave speed and behavior change depending on the density and elasticity of the medium enabling detailed tissue differentiation in diagnostic imaging.